In the previous lecture, we have seen a concrete example of how to calculate the delta value for a given Haar feature. And the closer the value to 1, the more likely we have found a Haar feature. But we have to sum up lots of lots of values because a Haar feature usually contains lots of lots of pixels. So not just 8 pixels, but for example, thousands of pixels. So we have to sum up lots of lots of values. And that's that's why we have to talk about integral images. Okay, so the problem is that we have to calculate the average of a given region several times. And calculating the average has the running time complexity ordo n squared, which is a quadratic running time algorithm. So we can use integral image approach to achieve ordo 1, so constant running time complexity. You may pose the question that why are there so many operations? Because we have to use hard features with all possible sizes and locations. Okay, so we have been talking about the edge feature and the line feature, but of course we have to use lots of lots of variations of these features. So the size of these kernels may differ. For example, this is a line feature. This is the same line feature, but with different size. This is the same line feature, but with different size and so on. So that's why there are going to be lots of lots of operations, because Viola-Jones algorithm uses lots of lots of kernels. So the number of features can be as high as 200,000. Okay, and every time we have to use a quadratic algorithm, as we have seen in the previous lecture, so this is why we need to find a more optimal approach. And this is why integral image approach came to be. So instead of using the original image, we are going to transform this image into the integral image. And a given pixel in the integral image is the sum of all the pixels to the left and above. So 1.2 is equals to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4. Okay, let's take another example. For example, this pixel is the sum of all the pixels in the original image to the left and above. So 5.3 is equals to the sum of all of these values. And why is it good to use the integral image? Because if we want to calculate the sum of these values, you may pose the question that, okay, why are we after the sum of these values? Because when calculating the similarity to the Haar feature, we have to sum up the pixel intensities for a given region. So the average of the pixel intensity for the dark region minus the average of the pixel intensities for the bright region. So that's why when dealing with Haar features and Viola-Jones algorithm, we have to sum up lots of lots of numerical values. Okay, and if we use the integral image instead of the original one, if we want to calculate the sum of these values, we don't have to consider all of them, because if we sum up all of these in the original approach, we are going to end up with an ordo n squared, so quadratic algorithm. Instead, we are going to manipulate the values in the integral image, because the sum of all these numbers are equals to the value of this pixel. So we just have to consider the bottom right pixel of the original image. Okay, this is the pixel we are considering. So the sum is equals to 0 0.7, but here we are going to consider all the pixels to the left and above. Of course, we have to subtract 0 0.5 because we don't care about these values. Okay, but again, we have lots of lots of unnecessary values, so what do we have to do? We have to consider this pixel, so that's why plus 0 0.2, and finally, we have to subtract the value of this pixel, and this is how we are able to end up with the sum of these values. If we want to calculate the sum of six values, of course we can use the original approach. But usually when dealing with the Viola-Jones algorithm, we have to calculate the sum of thousands and thousands of values. So that's why this approach is more convenient and we can achieve ordo 1 constant running time complexity for handling hard features. 
So again, what do we have to do? If we want to find the sum of a rectangle like this, we just have to consider the bottom right pixel on the integral image. Okay, then we have to subtract these values. Okay, then we have to add these values because in the next step we are going to eliminate all of these pixel values and we end up with the sum what we are looking for. Okay, so instead of considering all the values in the rectangle, as you can see, we just have to use four values and we have to consider four pixels on the integral image in order to end up with the sum. So the sum with the integral image approach is 1.7 and if you sum up these values, it is 0 0.9, 1 0.2, 1 0.5, 1 0.6 and 1.7. So as you can see, it is working fine. We are able to end up with an algorithm with the help of the integral image approach and we are able to reduce quadratic running time complexity to ordo 1 constant running time complexity. And this is exactly what we are after. Okay, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about how to use boosting and add a boost in order to end up with a powerful classification algorithm capable of detecting human faces. Thanks for watching.